Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be something a little bit different. There are a lot of you that have been asking me to do more fashion and accessory videos for a long time. I have been getting these requests for at least a year. Basically, ever since I started my channel, people have been asking for me to put in more fashion and accessories, and I don't know why I haven't. Um, on my Instagram, I'll post more outfits of the days and things like that. Not a ton, it's mostly makeup. And if you're not following me on Instagram, I will put my uh, name below. It's just Risa Does Makeup. And like I said, I'll post more of my outfits of the day there. And then also on Snapchat, I'll often post, um, show you guys what I'm wearing. And anyway, I've gotten so many requests and I really have no excuse, no good excuse for not doing a video like this in the past. But I finally just gathered my things, gathered my thoughts a little bit. Although if you guys watch my videos, you know that I can get pretty talkative and I can go off on little tangents. So I'm gonna try not to do that. So I'm really hoping this video isn't going to be 30 minutes long, but I have a lot of information to share with you guys. I'm gonna to try to get out as much as I can that will be the most helpful, the most useful to you. So if you're interested in hearing more about where I shop, how I get the best deals, some of my favorite shoes and accessories, then please keep on watching. But before I get into that, I just wanna say that I am very aware that everybody has a different sense of personal style. The things that I like, many of you may absolutely hate, and that's just the nature of fashion and having a personal style, is that it's your own, and not everybody is going to like it or think you look nice. They might think that you look, uh, that you're dressing too young, or for me personally, I know some people might think that I dress too young for my age. But just like with makeup, I'm not a big believer in rules. Actually, I don't believe in them at all. I am all about wearing what you like, whether it's a red lipstick, false eyelashes, or a short skirt, whatever you feel comfortable in. Now, I know some people disagree with that. They think that women of a certain age should not wear mini skirts. You see these articles all the time that, you know, women shouldn't show their knees after a certain age, or women shouldn't just, women shouldn't, women shouldn't, you know, all about the age that you need to stop doing things. I'm certain that there are gonna be people watching this video that are gonna say that she dresses way too young for almost 44 years old. And one of those people who might agree with you would be my very own mother. I've tried on many dresses in front of her where she'll say, don't you think that's a little bit too young for you? And she's been saying that since I was like in my early 30s. Now don't get me wrong, I love my mom, I love shopping with my mom, but like a lot of moms, she can be a little judgy and she's aware of this. So if she watches this video, she knows and she has gotten better at saying those things. She knows I'm at a point in my life where I just don't care what other people think. If I put something on and I like it and I feel good in it, I am going to wear it. So I wanna start off with accessories. I know there are people out there that only want to wear real jewelry, uh, real diamonds, real gold, real silver. I am not one of those people. I love some good costume jewelry and I feel like it can really make an outfit pop, like a statement necklace or statement earrings. Even from the time I was probably 13, 14 years old, and this was you know the mid to late 80s, I wanted to wear big earrings. They were in and I loved them. The gaudier, the better. Does anybody remember Star Search and they had the supermodel category and they would come out in their bedazzled gowns and their big sparkly earrings and I absolutely loved big sparkly earrings. Definitely pared things down quite a bit as I've gotten older. My go-tos now are pretty much uh, diamond stud earrings, whether they're real or they're fake. There are some amazing fakes out there now that look just like the real thing. And I just think they're a great um, item just because they go with anything. And then I am a, also a hoops girl. I like a nice pair of gold hoops. I'm not talking like huge hoops like you see maybe on Khloe Kardashian. Smaller hoops, just small, medium, large. I have them all. I love a simple gold hoop. Um, and then I also like just small, dangly, sparkly earrings. They can be big, they can be small. I like to have a variety of sizes. None of them are quite as big and gaudy as the ones I wore in like the late 80s or early 90s. Definitely uh, a much smaller uh, statement. And some other things I really love are either dainty necklaces like this one or big statement necklaces. I also love a good cuff. You've probably seen in many of my videos, I love cuff bracelets. So my biggest problem with cuff bracelets is that I have very skinny wrists. So finding ones that work that don't just fall right off is very difficult. So when I find them, I usually buy them. This one actually right here is a little loose, but you have to be able to take it off. And so that's the thing that I look for. I look for cuffs that 
you can mold to your arm. Like this one, I need to retire. I've had it for so long and it's all scuffed up and it looks terrible. But I got this one at Michael Kors. So this was a little bit of a pricier one, but what I liked about it is that it fit my skinny wrists and it is bendable without breaking it. So it's actually a little bit too tight at the moment. Um, I know some people are probably thinking I look like Wonder Woman. I don't really wear this one as much anymore, but it still has its uses. When I feel like I just want a bold statement cuff, I'll go to this one, but again, okay, now I can't get it off. Um, again, I think I need to get something new because it's just, I've had this one for maybe four or five years and it is really scratched up. There's gotta be a way to clean it, I'm assuming, but anyway, moving on. This is another one of my favorite cuffs. This one has some little sparkle accents. I found this one at a little shop in St. Helena when my husband and I were in wine country in Northern California. And sometimes you can find beautiful jewelry just in local shops. And this one happened to be another one that fits my wrist. Actually, I'm gonna take this one off because this is, I usually wear them on my left hand. And see this one, it's a little wide, but then I can pinch it and it closes really nicely and is secure around my wrist. And I love this one just because of the little sparkle at it, at, that it has. And I have worn this in a couple of videos. So really, um, that, those are kind of my go-tos. I do have some gold bangles that I wear. And you're gonna notice that most of my jewelry is gold toned. I just find that that looks best on me. I consider myself to have a neutral skin tone where I can wear silver and I can wear gold. For some reason, I'm just really, really drawn to gold. So most of the stuff you're gonna see is gold. So cuffs and bangles are usually my go-to. I love to throw on a cuff with like a sleek black jumpsuit, or if I am wearing like a flowy maxi, I might prefer to wear some bangles, and you can find bangles anywhere. One of my favorite places to shop for accessories in general is TJ Maxx. The TJ Maxx's by me have great jewelry sections, and often I will find the same earrings that you'll see at Nordstrom. Nordstrom will be selling that pair of earrings for you know 120 or 150, and TJ Maxx will have the exact same thing for $29.99. Another place I really like to shop for accessories is Nordstrom Rack. They have a really, really nice accessories section that you can pick up necklaces and bracelets and earrings for really, really good prices. Now, another way I found to save money on accessories, aside from just shopping at stores like TJ Maxx and Marshalls and Ross and Nordstrom Rack, is finding dupes of higher end products. Just like with cosmetics where you might wanna find a dupe for that Chanel foundation, I am into looking for dupes in fashion, accessories, shoes, outfits, and I wanna to talk to you guys about this necklace that I'm wearing right here. I saw something super, super similar on an actress, well not an actress, she's a reality person on Bravo, and I saw her in the interview section wearing a necklace that looked just like this one. I just thought it was so pretty. It really had picked up a lot of sparkle and I just really, really wanted it. So there is um, a blogger who does list the fashion. She will help you locate uh, an item that somebody on TV is wearing. And so I tweeted her about the necklace and she responded and it was up on her blog and it's called Big Blonde Hair. I'll just give her a little plug. Anyway, she um, put the necklace that uh, the girl was wearing, again, that looked very similar to this, and I clicked on the link that she had given and it's a $720 necklace. So this is what it looks like, but this is the Lana Blake necklace that is $720. So of course that version is 14 karat gold and I happened to be in a Nordstrom that carried the necklace so I wanted to try it on. I really wanted to see, is this really worth the 720? So I went to Nordstrom, tried it on, even the saleswoman that was helping me, we both agreed that it was beautiful, but we weren't sure if it was $720 beautiful. So what I did is I went home and I Googled Lana Blake necklace dupes and some stuff came up and then I saw a photo from a woman who sells on Etsy and I saw this necklace and I was like, oh my God, it looks identical and hers was $72, not 720, 72. And it came in three different lengths. Cause that's another thing with these types of necklaces. I don't like them to go, I don't like the lariat portion to fall too far between my cleavage. So I like that she offered different options in length. So 
I was getting ready to purchase this necklace. I couldn't believe that I found what appeared to be the perfect dupe for this necklace. So I was about to purchase it. And then I thought to myself, I wonder if this Etsy seller would be interested in working with me, basically collaborating with me, partnering with me, because so many of you ask me where I get my jewelry. And most of it is from places like TJ Maxx and, and Marshalls or places that you really can't buy the exact same thing anymore. So. I emailed her and I said, would you be interested in partnering with me? I'll show the necklace because I was literally two seconds away from pressing yes on the PayPal. And she said, sure, because I said, you know, I will link people to your jewelry. But I did ask her if she would offer you guys a promo code because I want to give back to you guys. Obviously, I'm showing you something that I was going to purchase whether whether she worked with me or not, because I absolutely love it and I've been wearing it with everything. But she was also nice enough to offer my viewers a promo code. So for the next two weeks, you can use the code Risa in LV, and of course all the information will be in the description bar. You can get 10% off your purchase. So if you wanna get this necklace, I'm gonna to link to her Etsy shop. She has a lot of beautiful things. Prices are reasonable, her reviews are amazing. So I'm absolutely obsessed with this necklace. It goes with everything. It has just the right amount of sparkle. It's the perfect length. So I highly recommend you checking out classic designs on Etsy and taking advantage of that 10% off because it only lasts two weeks once this video is posted. So back to the idea of finding dupes. One of the places that I love to get fashion inspiration from is revolve.com or shopbop.com. Those are two websites that I do order quite a bit from, mostly when they're sales, but I do take a lot of inspiration from the way they put their models together because they will accessorize with earrings and shoes. And I happen to see a lot of models wearing the same cork shoe. So I clicked on it and they were from Schutz and the, or Schutz, S-C-H-U-T-Z. And I'm gonna show you a picture. This is the Chimes sandal. So it had a nice lower heel, but I am all about the nude shoe. I am crazy about nude shoes. I'm gonna show you all of my favorites in just a minute, but I really love the sandal because again, it went with everything and it wasn't a super high heel. I have enough nude heels. I wanted something that would be a little bit more comfortable for just every day. And again, it looked so great with shorts on these models. It looked great with dresses. So of course they were sold out and the shoe was $170. So I went once again into Google and I searched for cork sandals and a bunch came up. A lot of them were not quite what I was looking for. They were either flat sandals or they had too high of a heel or they were still pretty expensive. I found this one from Kenneth Cole, I believe on the 6 p.m. website, 6pm.com. And of course I'm going to, if they're still available, put the link down below. Yes, it's a little bit higher of a heel, but it's not as high as the other one Schutz makes, which is probably about four inches. This one is probably like two and a half or three, but it's still pretty comfortable. It's not the most comfortable shoe uh, because this is a little bit tight around my toes, but it gives me the look I want. So, and this one was only about 70 or $80 I think I paid. And I believe I had a 6 p.m. promo code. They're always running promo codes. So that's another thing. Look for promo codes before you buy anything. Make sure you're doing that, you're Googling um, whatever website you're on, 6 p.m. promo codes. Always shop around holidays, 4th of July, Memorial Day's coming up. So many websites have good sales around Memorial Day. And don't forget to use Ebates. I know every YouTuber talks about it, but I, for the longest time, knew about it, but never used it. And then a light bulb finally went off and I remembered to start going to Ebates and shopping through them. Like it was shopping at Macy's or Sephora, all you have to do is sign up. It's free to sign up. There's no catch. You just go to the website, you sign in. If you wanna shop at Sephora, you click Sephora. It'll take you right to that website. Whatever you purchase, you will get a percentage back. Sometimes it's 3%, sometimes it's 5%. Sometimes they have double cash back, so you'll get 6% back. And I believe they send you a check every three months and it goes right to your PayPal. It's just a really easy, no brainer way to get money back from your purchases that you were gonna make anyway. So that's definitely one of my top tips. I tell all my family members about it and a lot of them didn't even know about it. I'm like, how did you not know about Ebates? But anyway, back to the shoe. That is how I find a lot of my dupes simply by doing a Google search and clicking on images and then I'll click on, I won't necessarily go to the websites that they list. I like to see pictures and then visit the website. And I read reviews, especially when it comes to shoes. A lot of people will tell you if they fit small, if they fit large. Sometimes the reviews are mixed and you just don't know what to get. 
but a lot of times I will order from a place like Zappos if I can or Nordstrom because I know that the return policy is so good. 6 p.m., I wasn't aware that, because I thought, because I think they're owned by Amazon and Zappos, I thought that they would have like such easy returns um, like those other two websites, but I ordered a dress at the same time I ordered these shoes that didn't work out and you do have to pay your own return shipping, which kind of sucks, but I've just gotten so used to Amazon and Zappos and Nordstrom, all these places that don't charge you for return shipping. So look for that too. That's another money saving thing is to look for websites that have free shipping and free returns. So speaking of my obsession with nude shoes, I'm gonna show you some of my favorites. These have to be my favorite shoes of all time. They are the Stuart Weitzman Nudist. Now they do make a nudist song, which is, if you can believe it, taller than this. This is the three, I think, and a half inch version. The nudist is like four or four and a half. They're like stilts. I couldn't even get my foot into those. I was like straight up and down. And then they have something called, um, new new naked or something which is a much smaller heel so this is the kind of in between the nudist song and they are very pricey but the way i justify expensive shoes is my cost per wear because i wear these with literally everything wear them with jeans wear them with a dress like this i will say that i was a little confused by the reviews on nordstrom because all of them are like glowing reviews talking about how comfortable this is it's not comfortable, at least to me it's not comfortable. The first, no the first night I wore them, I wanted to amputate my feet. They hurt so badly, but they're so beautiful. And again, they're expensive, but if you can swing it, I highly recommend them. For me personally, expensive shoes and handbags and clothes, they aren't part, part of my everyday shopping experience. I don't tend to buy shoes this expensive. The shoes that I'm gonna show you were once a year purchases and I always buy something classic. So that's another trick for me and it works in my family is that I will try to avoid buying as many little things and really save up for one major, just one because it's not in my budget like some other YouTubers and bloggers that can buy Christian Louboutin shoes every other week. I cannot, I can get one pair a year because that's what my husband and I agreed was okay for our family budget. So when I am buying these nice expensive shoes, I, again, tend to buy something classic that I can wear with a multitude of outfits. So I really don't even need that many shoes because I have these that I can just reach for that will work, that I feel really, really beautiful in. I might be in a little bit of pain, but I feel really beautiful in them. And a lot of them do have dupes. So before I owned this, I was wearing these from Express. And I think these were around $70. Now, the difference, of course, is the strap across. As you can see, the nudist song has a much thinner strap. The other thing is this nude works a little bit better for my skin tone. So when you're looking for a nude shoe, make sure that you get one that does match your skin tone. I tend to self tan my legs. My legs are always much tanner than the rest of my body. So this is a much better match for me. What I did like a little bit better about the nudist song than this one is that the heel on this is straight up and down. This one kind of curves in a little bit. It has that curve. Again, this is more straight up and down. I just like the look of this one better. But the nice thing about this one is it has a little bit more padding on the side. So they're not quite as painful. So if Stuart Weitzman isn't in your budget, I highly recommend just a good dupe. I really feel that a good strappy sandal should be a staple in every woman's wardrobe, whether it's a tiny heel or a block heel, but just having that nice kind of nude look around the ankle and the toe, um, just make sure you get one that is comfortable around the toes because a lot of times this will smush and that does not feel so good. An example of a lower heeled, comfortable strappy sandal is this one from Sam Edelman. I can't think of the name, but I will link it below. It's very popular. It comes in a ton of different colors. This is like a two, two and a half inch heel. Also with this one, just the strap across and the strap around the ankle. Looks very pretty, elegant, and is comfortable. The other type of nude shoe I love is a pointy toed pump. I don't like them too pointy. I don't like them to look like witchy kind of shoes, but just a rounded toe like this. This is a Christian Louboutin. Again, it was one of my purchases of the year. I don't go around buying shoes like this every day or every week or even every month, but I, again, wanted something classic. These also are torture devices. They kill my feet, but they are so pretty. So I love the look. I call these my sit down shoes. I only wear these when I am going to be dropped off at the front of a restaurant and sitting for the night or from somebody's house party, then I'll wear them. 
but a lot of times here in Las Vegas, you're walking very, very far to get to a restaurant or a show because those casinos are huge. And a lot of times they have those wobbly kind of cobblestone floors that are terrible and no matter what heel you're wearing, but I love these, but there are so many good dupes. And again, it's not about the specific shoe, it's about the style. And just as having that strappy sandal for the summer in a nude, I also believe in having a good nude pump. And this was my shoe of the year from a couple years ago. This is the uh, Very Privé from Christian Louboutin. This one is actually comfortable. It's leather, it's regular leather, not patent leather, so it's stretched out uh, much easier. So I know I'm repeating myself here, but if I'm going to be spending a lot of money on a shoe, I want it to be something classic that will go with anything. One of the main reasons why I haven't bought the Valentino Rock Stud as my shoe of the year, because there are so many knockoffs of it that look just as good. And it's a trendy shoe. In a couple years, I don't think really, although they do keep coming out with new versions of them, I don't know, there's just something about seeing them in every, uh, you know, Charlotte Russe or Forever 21, a similar type of shoe that's sold for like $19.99. Of course the quality is very different, but when you're looking at someone from afar, you don't really know that their shoes are $1,000 or if their shoes were $50. Of course the person wearing the shoe knows how much they spent on them and they probably feel really, really good in them. And that's kind of how I feel about these shoes. I can wear them with a pair of jeans from Target and I still feel like a million bucks. I feel like it just elevates my outfit and I feel good. And that's what it's all about is projecting confidence, feeling good in what you're wearing. So I wanna talk about more places that I personally shop. I've already said that Revolve and Shopbop are some of my favorite um, websites to at least get inspiration from, but on occasion, they will have great things on sale. I recently purchased a dress, and again, I'm gonna put some pictures in here so you guys can understand what I'm talking about versus trying to put them on and show them to you on camera. Um, I just recently purchased a dress that retails for $248. It's for an event I have coming up, and it comes in a bunch of different patterns and colors, but one of the patterns was on sale for $103 instead of the $248. And I liked that pattern just as well as I liked the other ones, so, so I decided to order it. I thought, I'll get the $103 one, and I absolutely love it. It's perfect. I'm gonna wear it all summer long to a lot of different things. So that's one of the things I always do. I always go to the sale tab, and oftentimes I will see things like that, where I have this other dress that I wore recently, um, and I'll, again, post a picture. So the last time I wore it was about a month or so ago, and I posted the image on Instagram, and then I also posted some, you know, with the people I was out with on Facebook, and so many people complimented me on that dress. And I think it's around 200 and some dollars, and it comes in a variety of colors. And I love the fit on me. I would love to have it in more colors, but I'm not spending that much money on it. I got the yellow color on sale. Sometimes patterns or colors will go on sale. And I think at the time I ordered the yellow, that one was on sale. I think it was on sale for like $90 or 75 even. And then there was another color, maybe like a turquoise color. And I just decided to go for the yellow because it might've been the only one they had left in my size. But now, and again, I understand not everybody can wear yellow and not everybody might like the colors that are available on sale. So I'm not telling you just to buy it because it's on sale. Obviously it has to be a color and a style that works for you, but look for those things. Look for full priced items on sale in a different color or a different pattern. So that in a nutshell is how I shop. I look for the best deal I can possibly find. I like to get to know my sizes and different brands. So aside from that, always look for promo codes. Always make sure you get free shipping and returns. Always know the return policy. Try to find yourself a good tailor. Um, look for dupes of things. Always use Ebates if you can. I have to tell you that one of the main reasons I don't use things like Stitch Fix or Trunk Club, the places that will send you outfits every single month is basically one, I don't think they would ever get my style right. Number two is I enjoy the thrill of the hunt. I like Googling things and maybe finding something better than what I originally thought that I wanted. Maybe I'll see something on someone's blog or on Instagram and I'll go to Nordstrom and it's full price and I am not one to pay full price for like a t-shirt. I'm not gonna spend $70 on a t-shirt, I'm just not. And a lot of times in those stitch fix and trunk, and trunk clubs and reviews that I've seen, they'll give you like a little you know blouse or something and they'll want you to pay $120 for it. Now if it wasn't my budget to do so, maybe I would. But as I said at the beginning, everyone's finances are different. And just like with makeup, you can find really cute, really nice things at affordable prices. 
I love shopping at Target. This dress is actually from um, Francesca's. And when I bought it, they happened to be running a special where if you buy one uh, article of clothing, you can get the next one for 50% off. So I ended up buying two dresses, but this type of dress, this florally frilly little dress, you can get at Target right now for around 20 or $30. This one wasn't that much more. I think it was like 50. And then, like I said, I got the second item half off. I could wear this for a night out. I could pair it with my Stuart Weitzman shoes and nobody would know that this dress was only $30 after the sale price. They could very well think that it's something that I purchased on Revolve or Shop Up. Or I could put on lower heel sandals or flat sandals and just go out to lunch with my mom or some girlfriends. Okay, I know there is so much more to talk about. There's so much more I wanna tell you. There's so much more I wanna show you. But if you guys want, I will do a part two to this. If you have more questions, please leave them in the comments or you can email me or you can DM me on Instagram. Um, I love talking fashion and beauty, as you can tell. I don't know why, as I said earlier, that I haven't gotten around to doing this before, but I can just talk and talk and talk and talk fashion and beauty all day long. So as always, if you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. Those thumbs down are probably gonna come from the people who thought I talked way too much. I get those comments a lot, but I am who I am. I am always gonna be real with you guys, and I'm talking to you guys like I would be talking to any of my girlfriends. So please also subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, all of those are Risa Does Makeup. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon.